A stakeholder-based consultation that took place in January 2011 came up with an integrated water resource management plan. The result is the constitution of a board and a permanent secretariat to see to the implementation of this plan, which is to coordinate activities and initiate interventions for the ecological health of the basin. Solomon Kwekudan Suankama was recruited as the basin officer and without much ado, he switched into work gear. The board work closely with the secretariat and we have various committees of the board. We have the Land and Waste Management Committee, the Technical Committee, Education and Awareness Creation Committee. So basically, I uh, facilitate the activities and then the working relations of all the committee. They've taken substantial load of our job from the secretary. Now, water resource management is anchored at the basin level with this, uh, you know, the basin boss and the secretary, basically in charge. They've developed their IWRM plans, which, are, which is the integrated water resource management plans, identified the, the problems therein, they've come out with solutions, actions and measures that they need to implement with respect to how to solve these problems. So all in all, they've, been, they've taken the load of the commission. One of the key tasks for Solomon and his team was to identify key areas that needed attention. We went around and we saw that waste management was a major challenge. Clay mining activities are also affecting the water quality. We also have illegal mining issues going on, as well as illegal logging. And the encroachment of the river buffer, as well as farming. These are the issues basically affecting the water of the tunnel basin. Identifying stakeholders and engaging them in a concerted effort to save the Tunnel River Basin has been a priority for the entire board and secretariat. One of such stakeholders, the Teshiman Market Women Association, are influential and very opinionated, and if the Tunnel Basin Secretariat must succeed, then these women must be made a part of the process. So Solomon and his team decide to pay the market women a visit and also to listen to their point of view and contributions towards saving River Tunnel. Yeah, <laughs> I dare have Tanon Sia, a month and I say no. Nina, Mwakano, and to one with you to Musa. Yes, you are the end, but as I need to teach my yan yay. It's your best threat. Move your way to my yard, a funeral, yes, threat. Move your same with a bola so. Bola no so much to bola goose your muso or my yay. Or one would try and yah, I will show you a sea, a dying. Or my yay, Nina, and moi. The Tano Basin travels through the Bnoahafo, Ashanti and western regions of Ghana, comprising 21 administrative districts. In 2010, when the Water Resources Commission produced a public education campaign on the Tano River Basin, it was centred in the Bnoahafo region where its origin was traced. We focused on activities within this region that affected the Tano. 
This time, the documentary looked more in the other regions, Ashanti and Western, where it eventually empties into the sea in neighboring Côte d'Ivoire. Unity Kofi Abudogo, a staff of Ghana Water Company Limited, tells us the long history associated with clay mining and the people of Tanoso. We are closer to the river Tano. And this river that serves Sunyane Township for drinking water. There's many activities going over here. And they, mine, they mine clay. As a result, when uh, it gets rainy season, we lose water because the river, the river flow into the land. And then there's all the sediment now flow directly into the river, but setting up the river bed. So more or less, the water quantity that can be held by the river now reduced as a result of the clay mining. We see the mining activity happening down here. If you see at the behind, if you see that there's a, a loop of water here, you can see even the trees are falling as a result of the mining. So this is also contributed to the quality of the water. It's affecting the quality of our water. The Tano Basin Secretariat advises that clay mining can be done, but away from the buffer of the river. From 100 meters to the river, they should do the mining, the clay mining. But beyond that, they can do that. So if they can able to respect the buffer, then it means that they can do their activities without having any challenge with we, the people of the Water Resources Commission. In Sunyani, we revisit a spot that was of deep concern to the Water Resources Commission and the local assembly. It had to do with waste management and encroachment of the buffer. Here is an excerpt from the 2010 documentary. We follow a waste dumpster and a septic emptier to the dumping point, and this is what we saw. Sensuya etini kui. If the bona na mugunu wa shro hano. Bona na mugunu wa hano. Bona na mungsio. Ana etini fa. Ebe fa eja poku fiye ha. Ata na ako sunya mungsio mu ha. Ako boom. E wungsio we ya mu. Sensu sensu etini ako tano mu. Ati ako diya watawa se fono. E sunya mungsio sono. Unti me nom. This a one one sabat mu de jare. Ana tutu na ya di ane. Zi yeto mungsio ukrom. Na be nom no wa ha. Ebi mu suri pie no. Omo pipe ni ni. Ha ebi ni suri pie trefa form. Etini ko nsio no mu. The state is actually the same thing. Nothing has been done yet. I've gone there, look at it, we discuss it at the board. As we speak, the liquid waste, the solid waste, all the situation is still the same. Nothing has changed yet. For the purposes of documentation, Damba Multimedia decided to visit the very grounds where this problem existed. We met the wife of Augustine Yabua. According to her, Mr. Yabua has traveled and that our encounter with him in 2010 resulted in several threats to their lives and livelihood. People from waste management providers and the municipal assembly, she said, claimed his expose affected their business and threatened mayhem. So we decided to take the story of Mrs. Yabwa to the municipal chief executive. Mr. Kwesi Oponga Babio. But the other side of it is that they are getting threats. And when I said from who we said Zoom line for any assembly for, so I said I'll bring it to your attention. You know, I don't think any something. assembly person or staff will go there and threaten anybody. If it all happens, it's a disgrace to us. And I wouldn't sit down for anybody to behave that way. If anyone is threatened by anybody and you suspect the person to be from my assembly, let them come to me, 
and I will know how to deal with the situation. Another issue of concern Mrs. Yabwa raised had to do with how the leachate from the waste dumping site affects their groundwater. Prior to the setting up of the tunnel basin board, Ghana Nuts discharged its raw liquid waste directly into the Tano River, which according to the Ghana Water Company Limited and the EPA, had a negative impact on their operations and the quality of water. Today, the story is different. When we paid Ghana Nuts a visit, they were very receptive and had a story to tell. Mr. Michael Ohiming is a Safety, Health and Environment Officer of Ghana Nuts Company Limited. Over the years, we're having problems with the effluent discharge directly into the Tano River. To that regard, we had to acquire the state of the art effluent treatment plant to serve for the purpose of treating effluent before discharging into the external environment. So it's again this backdrop that we had to invest into the treatment plant, and that was over 210,000 euros to be environmentally compliant. I'm sure the initial documentary that synthesized the whole country, I think, has actually also motivated them to do the writing because they've also realized that the water resources is for both current and future generations. So the activities cannot impact the resources which will later affect the whole population of the country. I would just tell anybody in any part of this country, and especially within the tunnel basin, when you want to set up an industry of which you will discharge your effluent into the environment, before you even start production, you need to get your treatment plant in place because you cannot discharge your effluent to the environment without treating them. So all people or investors who want to go into production must make sure that they have a treatment plant like any other organized company. The issue of waste management and encroachment of the buffer zone within the Techiman area is of rising concern as it affects the flow and quality of water from River Tano. Nat Vision Hotel is still being developed. Its walls have been constructed to block the passageway for the Sunyana River, which flows directly into the Tano. The hotel building itself does not respect the distance to the buffer zone. It is just one example of the many such buildings which litter the Techiman and Sunyani municipalities. And it doesn't stop there. Many more buildings are coming up as Solomon shows us. This is the Sunyani stream, which is a tributary of the Tano River. It has been encroached by developers. And as we can see for ourselves, these are pillars that are used to earmark this plot. So very soon, you see development going on. And if you look at even far, uh, just like this point, this person has even already put up a building there and it's still within the buffer. So once people are building close to the river, it means that the river will not be reducing in size. And very soon, if we are not careful, we can't get water. Human and industrial activities impact directly on the quality and volume of water Ghana Water Company Limited needs to serve the people of Techiman. Mr. Hansen Mensa Akote is the Regional Water Quality Manager for Ghana Water Company Limited and Deputy Board Chair for the Tano Basin Board of the Water Resources Commission. We did the water quality index for this water. I realized that it has even dropped further low and it's getting poorer. The activities upstream is seriously impacting on the quality of the water. And when that happens, it means that the treatment cost of the plant is going to increase dramatically. And this is what we are trying to avoid. Now, we are even running about two times our treatment costs because of the poor water quality index we have on the parameters of the river quality. If this will continue for a long time without dredging, 
or increasing the capacity of the catchment, what it means is that we are going to have just small volume at the catchment area, which may not be enough to serve the population of Sinyani. One does not need to travel far outside the city of Tichiman to experience the phenomenon of farming along riverbanks. In 2010, we spoke to Mr. Fosu Henry, CEO of Friends of Trees and River Bodies, on this issue. We visit him again to see if his campaign works and if there's hope for the future. Things are deteriorating, it's going from west to west because people are still farming. The trees that we planted along the river bodies, people are cutting them, giving the place to build it, which is illegal. Farming along the river bodies, cutting grazing along the river bodies, this gate is still in the ascendancy and a lot of pollution, even from the market. People pollute the, the, the river from the market area. Uh, chemicals, people are washing chemicals into the river, which is toxic to the, the, the fishes in the, in the river. So now the tidal basin is deteriorating as compared to those days when we started. A tributary of the Tano River flows through the city of Techiman and brings to bear the conflict between modernity and the preservation of our natural resources. The Tano River flows through the city and so both liquid and solid waste is disposed of in the river. The mentality of out of sight, out of mind is evident here. There's also clear evidence of open defecation directly into the river as it struggles for survival with roads, commercial properties, shops and people's residents. Mr. Prosper Ousubempa is a member of the Tree Farmers Association of Techiman. In consultation with the chiefs and people of Techiman, they decided to plant trees along the banks of the Tano River to preserve it. They're being helped in this regard by the Friends of Trees and River Bodies Unscrupulous people have started not only cutting the trees down, but also actually building along waterways. Even some people are building uh, beyond the rivers and cutting the trees. And even if, if you go to them, they want to beat us or they want to harass us. And we have been telling the chiefs. This quantum filling station is one of such buildings that are affecting the cause of the river. These houses on the main road are also guilty of the same crime of building along waterways. Belinda Pra, Assistant Basin Officer of the Tano Basin, shows us examples of encroachment on the river. The Tree Planting Association of Techiman did very well, planted a lot of trees here to protect the Tano River. But this time, that is not what we are seeing. All these trees have been cut down for other development. And that is the same situation we are facing on the Kintampo end of the road.